But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but your God who sees in the secret place, your, and your Father who sees secret, will reward you openly. Third secret that you must observe, that you must keep, that you must guard, you must act on, that you must work at, is a secret of fasting. Write that down in the chat. Secret of fasting. Again, but when you, but you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that you do not appear to man to be fasting, but with your Father, who is in secret place, a, and your Father who sees secret will reward you openly. The secret of fasting. Fasting, if, as we talked, that giving deals with our devotion. Prayer deals with our pride. Fasting deals with our desires. Fasting, write this down bridles your desires fasting bridles my desires fasting trains your passions it controls them it subdues them it helps them to be it helps you to be in control of them Passions are not bad, but when you're led by your passions, when you give into your passions, they destroy your life. Desires are not bad. Well, there are some desires that are bad. But when you give into your desires, when you're led by your desires, when your life is dictated by your desires and wants, you'll find your life to be destroyed. Fasting bridles your desires. Write this down. Romans chapter 1, verse 24. Romans 1, verse 24. For God abandoned them to do whatever shameful thing their heart desired. As a result, they did vile and degrading things with each other's bodies. And you can read that Romans chapter 1, verse 24 and down. And it shows the destructive nature of our desires and our passions. So when we are fasting, what we're doing is we're bridling our desires. We're controlling, we're telling our desires, listen, you're not in control of me. You don't control my life. You don't decide and make decisions and direction for my life. My spirit does. And you direct, you guide your desires. You subdue them by fasting. You subdue your passions. When Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, the Bible says that, uh, when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, the Bible says that he was fasting. And because he was fasting, he was able to say no to the temptation. For example, like the temptation of food, which first Adam failed. They were tempted with food, with apple, with the, with, uh, with, uh, the tree in, in, in the Garden of Eden. And because of that, the curse came upon the whole humanity. And Jesus also being tempted with food, tempted by the devil to create food for himself in the time of need. And Jesus, because he's fasting, he's able to control his desires, even desires like food, and thus bringing blessing into his life. And as a result, we partake of that blessing. Write this down. Fasting is true humility. I've addressed it in last streams and streams before that fasting, uh, that humility, that Biblical humility is not thinking low of ourselves. Biblical humility is not feeling bad uh, uh, about ourselves. Feeling, 
true humility before God, biblical humility is fasting, meaning abstaining from food for the spiritual reason, for a reason of seeking God. That's what true fasting is. In Ezra chapter 8, verse 21, New King James Version says this, Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava, and that we may humble ourselves before our God. Fasting is humility. There's many scripture that points that out in, in the Bible. And in the scripture where humility is used humble in, in, a, in, in the context of humbling ourselves before the Lord it was interchangeably used with fasting or it meant fasting it was it meant in a context of fasting so when we practice a secret of fasting we humble ourselves and Bible says that he extends grace to the humble he extends grace to the humble no not to those that think lowly of themselves those that think that they're nobody they're worthless no that's not actually what god tells us to think about ourselves on the opposite but true fasting which is humbling ourselves from a, and abstaining from food in that manner to seek god and seek his mercy let's look at some of the rewards of fasting because we read that god rewards the secret fast the secret fast okay the rewards of fasting there's many rewards but i'm just going to mention three for you um, number one is direction and guidance fasting brings direction from the lord and guidance we're going to look again at ezra chapter 8 verse 21 then i proclaim the fast there at the river of ahava and that we might humble ourselves before our god to seek him to seek from him the right weight for us and our little ones in our possession. Listen to that. They were humbling themselves to seek God's guidance, to seek God's guidance and direction. And we see in verse 31, I believe, and the Lord answered them. Verse 31, I believe, same chapter. The, the, the Lord answered them, the reward of fasting is guidance from the Lord, instruction from the Lord. Oftentimes, when I don't know what to do, oftentimes when I confuse what's my next step, what I do is I go in the time of fasting and seek in the Lord and say, Lord, I need your guidance. Lord, I depend on you. Lord, I humble myself before you. I don't want to go about, I don't want to go about my life the way I want to go. I want your instruction and your leading of your spirit in my life that I may accomplish, accomplish your purposes and your will in my life. And I want to tell you that God will most certainly will answer that prayer okay number two fasting brings physical protection physical protection write that down physical protection again we're gonna we were looking in the in the life of ezra uh, verse 31 verse eight, uh, chapter 8 verse 31 says that we broke camp at ahova canal uh, canal on April 19th and we started off and started off to Jerusalem and gracious hand of God protected us and saved us from enemies and bandits along the way when we humble ourselves before the Lord in fasting there is physical protection that comes over our life yes physical protection the Lord protects us from harm the lord protects us from harm and we see that in the story of ezra he also provides spiritual protection but in this for the sake of our conversation today we're going to just focus on a physical protection reward number three that i want to look at fast uh, the reward of fasting 
fasting brains separation. Write this down. Fasting brains separation. We'll take a reading from Acts chapter 3, verse 2. Acts, sorry, Acts chapter 13, verse 2. Acts 13, verse 2 says this. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, again, we see here, divine instruction, divine guidance as they were fasting. But here's what he said. Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Fasting brings separation. Fasting brings separation from your past. Fasting brings separation from ungodly desires. Fasting brings separation from the 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 fasting brings a separation and it separates you from the crowd we see that Barnabas and Saul together with all the believers were fasting and praying and during that fasting and prayer it that fasting that ministry to the Lord it separated them from the crowd for this specific purpose for their specific call fasting breaks that cycle of going around the mountain Fasting separates you. It breaks you away from the mandate life, from the regular routine. It separates you. It pulls you apart from the crowd, from the norm, from the regularity of life. It sets you apart. Not only it sets you from, but it sets you apart for things. It sets you apart for God. It sets you apart for ministry. It sets you apart for your purpose. It calls you into the call of God into your life. It calls you into the divine purposes of God. Write this down in the chat. Fasting brings separation. Brings separation. It brings you, it separates you into your calling. You might be in a crowd of people that that there might be good people they might be even a church people but when you secretly fasting seeking the Lord and humbling yourself the Lord will have his eye on you the Lord will separate you the Lord will make you stand out because of the secret the secret of fasting when I look at my life when I look at um what the Lord has done in my life and, and and this is not to boast but this is to uh confirm God's word and as a testimony that I look at my life where I was together in the crowd with many people good Christians good people good believers but one of the reasons why my life is different one of the reasons why the Lord has marked my life and separated me for the from the crowd separated me from the mundane separated me from the average Christianity and setting me in my purpose and my calling is because I humbled myself with fasting before the Lord sought myself with fasting with many days many times when nobody knew that I was even fasting but the Lord knew and the Lord brought the separation I want to tell you that if you see God in fasting, the Lord will bring separation. Amen. And this is to encourage you again towards that uh, prayer and fasting that we're doing as Hungry Gen. And if you have not joined us in this 21 day, the days of prayer and fasting, there's still 11 days left. Come and join us. Lord is not necessarily looking at the amount of days. He's looking at your heart and your humility. Come and join us.